In early January, there was a blog that I read by Sky Truth. It's a group that basically tracks fishing vessels using satellite AIS data. And the blog put out an entry saying they had sighted some unusual vessel activity in the South Indian Ocean. We decided to check out just what this unusual activity was. Using our drones and small boats and the Steve Irvin itself, we documented uh, this fleet of six vessels. We found that the vessels in fact were fishing vessels registered to China and they were fishing with drift nets which is a banned form of fishing gear since 1992. On day five, the Steve Irvin decided to confront one of the vessels, the Fu Yuan U-71. And seeing the Steve Irvin arrive, that vessel abandoned the gear and just left it in the water. At that point in time, we realized that we had the responsibility to lift this drift net out of the water and bring it on board. Over the next two days, the crew attached this drift net onto the Steve Irvin stern. We managed to release 18 live sharks back to the ocean by cutting them free from the drift nets. We brought in four kilometers off the net on board and we documented the bodies of 321 animals. These animals covered 12 species, including not just sharks and critically endangered southern bluefin tuna, but also numerous species of pelagic fish, dolphins, seals, swordfish. The destruction in the nets was massive, and it was easy to see why drift nets had been banned since 1992. Having collected all the evidence, the Steve Irvin left the scene, but ensured that the confiscated fishing gear, along with all the photographs, the logbook entries, and the eyewitness statements, were sent in a report to China, along with authorities at Interpol and the secretariats of the Fisheries Management Organization. A few weeks later, the Steve Irvin pursued the Fu Yuan U-76, one of the six vessels that we had documented in January, all the way back to China from the Indian Ocean. During that pursuit, we learned that the Chinese government had acted on the information we had sent to them and recalled all the six ships back to China to face an investigation. But what we found was during the chase, the Fu Yuan U-76 began to deliberately destroy evidence. We saw that her fishing gear, the winch, all evidence of the vessel having engaged in fishing with drift nets was systematically destroyed. Right after entering the exclusive economic zone of China, the Fu Yuan Yu began to look for avenues to be able to lose the tailing vessel, which is the Steve Irvin. And the first attempt it made was to contact two passing Chinese warships and ask for help. And then when that failed, the Fu Yuan Yu 76 engaged in dangerous maneuvering across the bow of the Steve Irvin. All of this was again documented and once again reported to the Chinese authorities. Our at sea campaign ended when the Fu Yuan U 76 pulled into a Chinese port and we were able to report a location to the Chinese authorities. With the vessels now back in China, those six ships are no longer in the oceans and they are in a place and in a jurisdiction where they can be tried in a court of law where an investigation can be launched. And as we now know, that these vessels were actively violating 11 different international conventions. And yet, in this black and white case of illegality, had it not been for the one vessel, the Steve Irvin, to actually confront them, nothing would have changed. And if we are to change and secure the future health of our oceans, then the countries of the world really need to wake up to the realities of illegality on the high seas and work towards securing a convention to be able to tackle and put an end to this form of illegality.